Ever think about white clover pathways? Wonderful beneficial insect foods. Clover tends to get lots of aphids, lots of food. You know? We're blessed with water. We have water features everywhere. We're very lucky that way. We always have cilantro growing everywhere. We have another succession that's due to go out. We just keep starting it. Every time we start stuff, we start cilantro and dill. You know, we want it happening everywhere. If you've not had um, the fresh coriander, go ahead and crush this. You can taste it a little. It'll be quite strong if it's not on food. But pass it around. That's what the chefs love, you know. Um, and like I said, you can just smell it when I pull it up like that. You know, the smell's already coming on. Um, this, all, this whole row is full of farms gaping, and it's weedier than some years because we've been really hectic, frantic with the new greenhouse and stuff. But just filled with flowers. All of them are going to be beneficial. You know, there's just tons of beneficial habitat here. And then as you go over, we don't have as much in bloom right now, but you'll just see porridge, um, cilantro, rebecca, coreopsis, bachelor buttons. The guys have gotten real good about whenever they go out to plant, grabbing a few, grabbing a little pot full of farmscape and just poking it in here and there. Just poking them in, you know. And sometimes they're in the way, we take them out. You know, we don't get too sentimental about it. You know, we get volunteers, we leave the volunteers where they can be. I noticed at the end of this row, there's a volunteer borage and maybe another volunteer. And it took about, I don't know, maybe six or seven gorgeous onions out. And the guys made the decision. We really, you know, sometimes they'd look and say no and they'd rip it out. Mm -hmm. But they decided to leave it. Likewise, there's some, a few places where sunflowers are competing with stuff, you know. And we just, we pretty much leave it to the grower who's, who's deciding what happens. You know, it's like, and it really is, it's about kind of just the feel, you know. And it, are those guys when they're leaving that in saying, oh, that's important for farmscape? No, they're just deciding I like that flower there, you know. But it kind of works, you know. We just have that. That's why I say Kaordia. You know, it's, it's not necessarily a formula. Yes. So something like yarrow. Uh, that's going to like where it is and spread like the dickens. You know, you have to kind of plan ahead on that, don't you? It spreads some, but we don't, you know, if we put it on out here, we tend to, you, there's a few exceptions here, we tend to mostly don't just put it on the edges, you know. Uh, but it's really yeah. not like comfrey, horseradish and those things. You can kill it. It's not that hard. And well, how do you kill it? You give it away. Yeah. You dig it up and you give it away. You divide it, you know, you put it other places, you know. It spreads, but it's not like, you know, Comfrey is fine if you don't dig it, you know. Horseradish is fine if you don't dig it. Crown vetch is an absolute no, you know. Mugwort, I'm, it's a wonderful plant. Keep it away from my garden, you know. <laughs> now my comfrey, I, I tend to cut it like almost like hay in a way. Yeah, I get it's like a three great thing to do. Out of, and yeah. I throw it in the compost. Absolutely, to get and yet you're keeping it from getting out of okay? hand that way too. Okay, that's great. I mean, it divides like heck too. So I mean, yeah, yeah. The, it divides like heck, as in it's like Medusa. Yeah, well, I mean, you can you can start other areas. Yeah, but you can it. also, if you're not careful, spread it that way. Okay. So you just want to be careful. I mean, if you dig comfrey, think that's where I would think carefully. Okay. I wouldn't dig comfrey without thinking, because you can turn a small comfrey patch into a huge one. Come out to my my little garden, which I haven't used for years at um, in Silo, and Tony Cleese came through with a um, tiller and didn't know the comfrey did that. I've got it all kinds of places, and the only way I get rid of it is to mulch it out with cardboard. You know, if I try and dig it, it comes back, you know. Okay, so we might have talked too long. We're not going to see as much. We have, that's another surface fly, though. We're seeing surface flies. We saw ladybugs. Really, I went, I'm trying to find some pests, because where we find pests, we'll find like more prey. napas. Pardon? The napas. Napas are a good bet. Yeah, let's go look at the napas. We'll find something. Yeah. They do like their pests, don't they? They definitely like their pests. And we now do have flea beetles in here, but early on, the flea beetles were very minor. Um, and now, like I say, we just hit it again with the, with the nematodes, so I'm hoping that that will start to give us control again. Go ahead and look in, see if you can see something besides flea beetle damage. And slug damage, <laughs> that's what I'm mostly seeing right now. We have, it hasn't been enough to worry about. We could use Sluggo. Sluggo's allowed, you know. But we have yet to use it. We have it and we've never used it, you know. This ground is certified organic? No, we don't certify. Oh, okay. We could, I think, except for what? We buy plants from Wade once in a while. Okay. And sometimes we don't, if we don't, we don't meet the standards. Right. Because 
we buy them just because we didn't think to start them, not mm -hmm. that we lost our crop, you know. Mm -hmm. And what else? Is there anything else? I think that's probably the only reason we couldn't certify, mm -hmm. you know. And you know what? I think I'd still rather buy from Wade, mm -hmm. you know. We don't need to certify. Um, How do you feel about this sedge? I hate it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and solution. And I'll show you where it's real bad. And what we're going to do is when we take out the garlic and stuff where it is, mm -hmm. we'll sow very thick buckwheat mm -hmm. and do successions of buckwheat for the summer. Mm -hmm. And that will really smother it, you know, okay. and wear it out, you know. Um, not seeing much. I mean, I would think to see more, but I'm not. Um, and I'm wondering if we could just, like, hoof it back to the, to the main brassica patch. Which is the nematode that you're using for Covidus? We're using Charlie Clark's compost tea. We're gluing it in the tea. So it's an array, and I'm not sure which one it is. Okay. Um, but it, it worked very, very well for us last year. And this year, frankly, Ben, to be truth, truthful, I'm not sure that it's going to work. Mm -hmm. Because it hasn't worked yet, because I know he treated where our melons were. Mm -hmm. And we've been hit twice by cut ones. We've lost most of our melons twice. Mm -hmm. And we've used BT, too. It's worn off, and we thought we probably got them all. Mm -hmm. But there's so many, we've been hit twice. And mm -hmm. if the nematodes were working, we would not be getting hit by them. Mm -hmm. But what I don't know is how long it takes for me. That last big rain we had, that's when he finally felt like he got the right rain. It wasn't too hard. We had 110 gallons of tea, mm -hmm. and he put it everywhere. You know? Right. Um, and so maybe they just haven't taken yet. Maybe the solution's been... Last year, in the fall, we had Chinese cabbage out, and it was like two or three weeks before we saw any flea beetles. Mm -hmm. And there never was significant damage. Mm -hmm. Arugula, pak choy, purple pak choy, all this you know, I mean, you can see now, mm -hmm. you know? But the thing is, they don't necessarily make it over now. For the vegetable weevil, Richard said, they now have gone to like northern Minnesota and found cold and hardy, more cold hardy nematodes. Mm. They're active at like 45. Uh -huh. And so we're going to get those this fall and put those out too. Uh -huh. And that combination might be, uh -huh. you know. And then I got to try and convince Charlie Clark or I got to learn how to figure out how to grow the nematodes in our compost. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I, we really like brewing, we put the tea out anyways. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, it's very easy to get it out that way. We're also putting a new irrigation system in. We're going to be able to inject everywhere easily all the time and that when um, Jake's farm injected with Richard's guidance mm -hmm. he got complete control because mm -hmm. he had enough irrigation he could soak enough you know mm -hmm. and the thing is some of the nematodes the SB type nematodes they are trappers they just land one place and wait for the pest to come to them but the HB nematodes swim through the soil and look for pest mm -hmm. so he got those when it rained they were the ones that went out in the path and gave further control Okay, let's head along this way. If you look, you'll probably see, we have other places that the onions and the leeks, you'll probably see some like silvery markings. Here's a lightning bug, right? Another beneficial insect, right? The adults feed on saw. And here is somebody. Let's see who it is. Somebody got good eyesight. Can you see what this proboscis looks like? Nice and big and thick, or is it looking kind of narrow? Uh, it's narrow. Yeah, then that's that's this is a plant feeder. That's what I thought. Pardon? Like the stink bug. Yeah, it is another stink bug in that there. That's a weevil. That's probably a bad guy. Most of the weevils are. Yeah, but it's it, it's actually not a not a bug. It's a weevil, oh. and um, they have big noses because they stick them in and suck out of the plant. You know. Hmm. Um, but it's nothing I care about, you know. It's not a vegetable weevil. That's the only one we have a pest of. And I'm not going to kill the adults anyways. I'm going to try to control them with nematodes in the, in the fall, you know. Why our nematodes don't control them now is because at this stage when our nematodes are active, they're an egg. And the nematodes don't attack eggs. So I have to have the fall nematodes to get control. So we do have Yarrow here. And this has been here for three years now, Joe. And that's how far it's spread, you know. So it does spread, but it's not spreading at a rate we can't handle. Yeah. You know? And the day it gets too big, we'll just divide the clump up and give clumps away to people. You know, I am serious. You can literally, it's okay by me, if you're careful, get a trowel. All you need is a little bit of root on a piece and you can get every color that's here and take it home. You won't hurt it. We have enough of it, you know. And it, it makes me happy to see it. You know? I recommend it if you want it. You know? We definitely had aphid issues on our peppers. We had two in we were in our greenhouse and we couldn't get lettuce in the greenhouse. And then we dug up the lettuce the next day for the peppers. And yeah. so the aphids were sitting there looking for something to eat. And that was an aphid that does 
does hit both, you know? Yeah, lettuce and peppers. Yeah, yeah. Um, we get aphid problems on these guys pretty often. Mm -hmm. um, I think they actually did treat these with soap. Sometimes we don't, you know? I don't think they bothered with me and we talked about it, but we thought, nah, we'll just put them outside and we'll get control. And we pretty much have, there really aren't any aphids now. This curling is from when earlier, you know, but I'm not mm -hmm. seeing significant, you know, I'm sure you can find an aphid here. Make a liar out of me, somebody, please, you know? But when I say we don't have aphids, we don't have aphids enough to worry about, you know? Okay, so I figured out this guy's a bad guy. I should just kill it, right? Yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to kill it. I don't care. It's a quote, quote, bad guy. It feeds on plants. It hasn't caused me enough grief in my life to kill it. You know? It's about to sting you. <laughs> I'm not a plant. I'm not worried about it, you know? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to just let it go, you know? It is not one of the marmated stings. I will kill those. I know what they look like. I'll kill those when I see them. So I the marmorated are narrower by the shoulders and then... They the have a lot more white. They have white on their antenna. They have white along their sides. It's like little white, spikes, spray yeah. painted yeah. white. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're very, that's like definitely trim. Pretty. Yeah, it's like trim. It's like, it's very pretty, you know? But then here's a, a C-Mac. Oh, the yeah. There goes C-Mac. If you haven't seen C-Mac yet, okay. there's C-Mac. Those are good. Those are right. my, they're my favorite bugs. I love those guys. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Yep, okay. You killed how many in your life? Didn't kill him. You didn't? Just Good man. There we go. Good for you. There's an, a, there is an asparagus beetle we don't tend to have around here that looks somewhat like that, by the way. We have the one that's gorgeous and has that kind of cross pattern on its back. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, I can say gorgeous because it's no longer a pest. When I had it as a pest, I didn't say gorgeous. Um, here, here's a good chance to find it something because this is a brassica. Really, you know what? This brassica and the Chinese cabbage and any other brassicas on this side of the garden by the end of this month, will not be here. We will have no brassicas here at all. Because harlequin bug, yeah, good eyes. Anybody not know harlequin bug? And now, let's see if the good eyes can find some eggs. Let's just go ahead and go through this plant like crazy and try and find some eggs. Um, the reason why we won't have these brassicas in here is because rotation is a real big part of our harlequin bug program. If we don't have them here at all, then they can't build up and we plant for the fall, we don't have high levels when we start. Do the harlequin bugs change pattern when they get bigger? No, it's the same pattern. They, they vary between um, kind of kind of yellowish and kind of orangish, you know? The bigger ones that kind of are the same shape and size as stink bug and they've got an orange but with like black tribal well okay yeah i guess they do change a little bit that's them yeah this looks different than the big guy yeah but that's them okay yeah and then the eggs by the way when we're done looking at these kill them <laughs> the eggs are a black and white spiral yeah. on them and they're like a whole bunch of them stuck together in they look like it's extruded plastic i think don't they yeah yeah, yeah. i'd love to find some i'd love to show you them. That. that's a good chance of showing you the cycle and the eggs are worth crushing if you see them you know we use everything, and our guys were the biological control last year. We had been hammered. Rocco was was really great with this garden. He went from zero to 60 in one spring. I mean, he had a really nice booth at the market his first year growing here. But he didn't know some things, and I wasn't here to teach him then. I was just coming in once in a while. And he let the harlequin bug problem get totally out of whack. And it, we were racked by it for several years. We've slowly gotten a grip on it. It's not that bad now. But last year, we grew a lot of brassicas here. We got a lot of cabbage from Troy's and they were huge, gorgeous cabbage. And the, Jeremy and Tim came through twice a week and in about half an hour, they went, and what they did is they just looked for harlequin bug damage. Mm -hmm. And they went there and found it and they killed every one and it made a huge difference, you know? They're easy to hand pick. Yeah, they're very easy to hand pick. They drop fast, but you can get below them together. Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah. they got every egg they could too. And that, and then spraying the soap, we, we're, right now, if we can get back there in time, you'll see our brassica place, and it'll be it'll be the cover crop place in the fall. We won't have any brassicas there. We'll have the brassicas here in the fall, right? Mm -hmm. But what we did was we came through, we sprayed the entire patch with soap, sorry beneficials, mm -hmm. sprayed it with strong soap, then mowed it, and then sprayed it again. And you know what? We thought it didn't work because I still was believing my eyes and believing my coworkers that it didn't work. And then at Southern Sog, I said that, and Richard said, "Yeah, you and Charles per Church, Pat." You both come to me and say it doesn't work. Wait three days, come back and take another look. We didn't do that, but this spring, no harlequin bugs at all. Mm -hmm. Now, it was also the year, you know, but I suspect that it did have a good impact. 
And I suspect that we nailed a lot of the remaining harlequin bugs with that soap spray at the very end. So and we were kind of soap. knocking our diversity back doing that. Yeah. You know a brand of soap? We use Safer. Okay. Or not Safer, we use MP because that's the size we get. Okay. Does everybody know about crop produ production um, services? They're um, on, I think, Sugarloaf Road. I can look at my um, GPS and give you the address even. Yeah, Sugarloaf. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you're going to buy that kind of big quantity pesticide around here, Seven Spring Farms does us all a great service. But as Marshall said, they're kind of proud of their pesticides. Mm -hmm. Crop Production Services is selling for a way lower price. They're selling to conventional growers. And they have things like Surround. They have the soap. They have Serenade. And their prices are way better. I told Mike aside of that and came back to my class and said, Pat, you saved me 30%. You know? 30% is a lot of money when you're, when you're dropping the price of a, of a big old jug of soap or a big old jug of Serenade. So it's a trip, but actually, if you live near each other, talk to each other and, and shop for each other. You know, Pat, um, yeah. I was going to tell you last year I totally handpicked harlequin bugs, and I was mentioning to you that I found that they they hang out at the top of the plant early in the morning when the sun first hits them. Great tip, you hear that, folks? I'm going to follow up on that one. I that's got a, them all. I had the kale all year long. When those kind it. of tips, that that's why it's every control. You know, because I mean, otherwise they're hard to find. We can't really afford to do a lot of hand picking as growers. Mm -hmm. But if we know that they're there early in the morning and we come through and just go knock in the soap, very quickly you can knock them way back. You know? And then you are the biological control. You, know? you suddenly have become a different part of that paradigm. Okay, let's keep moving quickly here. So folks, it's not the, it's outside of the, the purview of the class, but if you don't know Sacospora, which Ben and I were talking about because he was asking about the um, dock, which is an alternate host, that's Sacospora. And you know, this has been one great year for Sacospora, don't you think, for it not being bad? Yeah, it's been yeah. way better than yeah. the it's the, it's the It's the weather. Yeah. It's well, the weather. We've had a lot more rain and cooler And cooler, temperatures. yeah, that's it. You know? um, I was thinking it was us, but it's the weather. So you, know? you think it likes hot? It's the, it likes heat and humidity. Okay. That's what, that's and we've been having cool and wet. Yeah. yeah. We, we also still not have much humidity, really. It's been hot, but it's mm -hmm. not humid. You know? It's been way better. Yeah. Same yeah. with Alton area. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're having a great carrots right now. Yeah, yeah. So, Heat and humidity. On the other hand, the peppers are going a little slower. Yeah. It's just the nature of it. Uh, okay, well, what I'd like to do, does anybody see any of the um, silvery markings on the onion? Okay, right here. Plus. Come on in, take a look at this. If you see much of it, it's time to spray with soap. But that much, we don't care. You know? And this is, I love that this is like the evolution. And see the spiders and the, and the lightning bugs? They're probably feeding on thrips. That's what that is. That's thrips. They're really tiny. We can't see them, but we don't have to. The bugs do. You know? The higher the level of infestation, the more predators we see. At this point here, it's actually doing a little bit of serious damage. We might eventually decide we will spray with soap, but do we want to? No, because we got the beneficials in feeding. So we're just trying to see. So it's this holes here and then it breaks, it bends over it. Yeah, right. It, it does enough damage. Yeah, it's it taken can... it that far. But look at the onions. I mean, we think we're going to get a great crop. We mm -hmm. don't think we have to worry about the thrips. There's you know? some interesting. Yeah, yep. I don't know who that is, but you know what? It looks like a feeder. Never. It looks like it's eaten, you know? Mm -hmm. um, Never seen one of those. It would have been great to get a shot of that too. I love I love sending pictures of Richard and saying, who is that? And sometimes this. my favorite was, for years okay. I would see this fly and I got to go into my old Mac to get the picture, this but I will eventually get my slideshow, close right? Up camera. There was this big fly, it looked like a house fly, like a big house fly, and I would find him at the base of the potato beetle larva, right at its butt. I'm going, is it eating its shoe? Pardon me. Is it eating its poop? I had that other part out, but um, is that what it's doing? But I just thought there's something going on here because I keep seeing it here. I can't believe that that's a food source for it, you know? I think it's going to have a higher food grade source than that. I showed it to Richard. It's a tachyon fly, and it's a major predator. It, it, it lays its eggs in the larva. Yep, yeah. And that's so, what you're seeing here. Usually it's ladybugs. There's not enough food for the ladybugs to even bother, but there are other guys out here. There's a surface fly right there. Just doing that bit of minor patrol that's giving us control. And the whole gig with onions, it's all about how big your leaves are, how big your onions are. I'm looking real happy here. You know? I'm not I'm not suspect, I'm not worrying about the size of our crop. I mean, my big worry now is how big are the next gonna be? How good are they gonna keep? You know? That's that's my concern. It's not not the level of strip damage that we have.
Okay. If we can step over these without damaging, let's just move across the garden. If you can't step over though, then go around, please. We're just heading through the garden to see what else there is to see. Going to the side of the garden, we're just trying to make a sprint over to the grass and pass the air and pass the shot of that. Oh, this place here, this is quarantine. We don't want to walk in there or anything. We got Protopla capsici, one of the worst diseases out there. And we'll eventually lasagna bed it and grow perennials in there, but we're never going to get the soil worked up again. This year, yeah. Yeah, where the, the fabric is. But we are going to take those potatoes out. This is a good year not to have volunteer potatoes. Uh, a little off subject, but um, remember how bad late blight was last year? Mm -hmm. The volunteer potatoes are the vectors. So much as you might want to have the volunteers, don't. I don't think we're going to see anything exciting on these squash. I think it's pretty much pretty bug free, you know? Um, not much to see. We're pulling our garlic by the day, probably on Monday. We'll pull all this year because it's been so wet. It's wet down here anyway, but it's been gorgeous. Buckwheat popping up here and there, coreopsis, clover. That's all farmscaping. Frankly, you know, I forget if these guys are all that good for farmscaping. There's a sunflower. Uh, I just cedar grows them for it. Uh huh. Okay, so they are good. I grow them because I love them. Yeah, they're also. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I think they probably are. I just couldn't tell you for sure. I haven't been looking at them lately. Um, I think I remember now that they are pretty well covered up in the mountain here. These flowers Forest. are pretty old, so I wouldn't expect it to have that. The older flowers are pretty much just moved up. There's not much going to happen with them. But we'll cut them back and they'll probably flower again in the spring. The borage flowers, one of the better edible flowers. Some um, restaurants like to take them, pull them off. Freeze them in ice cubes and put them in fancy drinks. You know, as somebody I told that to the other day said, "Oh, that's one of those eleven dollar drinks, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that's one of the eleven dollar drinks. And you're paying for the borage flower." You know, um, if you want, anybody wants to try them, feel free to try them. Let me know if you do try them what you think they taste like. It's one of my favorite games. Anybody want to taste it? <laughs> it's a subtle flavor. Once in a while, somebody gets it. Usually, I have to tell you what it is, and then you go, "Oh yeah, that's what it tastes like." <laughs> um, but it does really taste like that, but it's just subtle enough that we don't get it. So there's just there's gonna be more and more flowers popping here. We have lots of them in. They're coming on. This is an example we plant lettuce. While we plant lettuce, we plant the cilantro, that's the button. Um, Coryopsis. We just scattered it through while we were planting, you know. Um, and then, as far as I can tell. There's nothing beneficial about Larkspur except for how happy it makes us to see it, you know? And yet, we always include it in our farmscaping. The thing is, someday we'll probably figure out there's some other reason to have it, you know? There's a reason we grow these things, sometimes we don't know what it is. Um, okay, so now... Can we do a sprint kind of walk? Can we walk real fast through the horse pastures and get back to the brassica bed or should we just call quits? Oh, you know what though? We gotta come up here real quick. And then we can actually go around the horse pastures. Autumn Joy Sedum, when it's in flower, incredibly loaded with beneficial insects. Incredibly loaded. This is one of those beds where I said we're going to come through and grow buckwheat when we get the onions out. Covered up with nuts said. This is the cup plant. This is so dry today and it hasn't managed to hold the moisture. But, oh, well, a little bit of moisture right down there, you can see. You can see what it did. You know, and that's enough water to feed a lot of insects, you know? This is the cup plant? This is the cup plant. And folks, it's not favoritism. I'm still paying back. I'll send you off with one. Cedar was one of my best interns, his partner. So <laughs> is this they get a special a treatment. It's a perennial? Perennial, yeah. It gets oh. bigger and bigger. It makes babies, which you could sell, I'm sure, you know. I put it on an edge. We we're never gonna put another one this right in the middle of the garden. Uh -huh. But on an edge, it works great. And there's a ladybug on here. Um, 
When it's in flower, it goes crazy with beneficials, and the flowers make fine cut flowers. You know, I don't know if you see water there, but we got some water here, Ben. It's a really yeah. dry day, you yeah. know. But it just is enough to hold that water in, you know. And it's also a joy to look at when it's in flower, you know. Mm -hmm. We grow that for um, Rocco. He just loves the smell of it. You yeah. know? Is just, it you know, we always have it. You know? I forget if those flowers feed the beneficials or not. They might. You know? <laughs> so he just hid. There was a bug right here, and he hid right behind this leaf. Oh, they do that. They're always hiding from they're, us. They're looksy. Uh huh. Yeah, that's a lightning bug. No, it's not. Take it back. That's a hopper, leaf hopper. Uh oh. Yeah. If I touch, he'll yeah. come back. But then there's a ladybug right there. You know. Um. And if we look, I'm sure there'd be more. And because it's a good place to come drink, you know, hang out, have a drink, see who else is there. It's kind of like the Serengeti watering hole. You know, you never know who's going to come eat somebody, get eaten. You know, it just kind of adds to it. And a lot of plants, like when I first put these in, they don't tend not to make volunteers, and then after a couple of years, they start making lots of volunteers. I suspect they'd start to change the soil around them so their volunteers do well, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, all right, so, well, we really should see how I can bug eggs in there, shouldn't we? Yeah. That seems like almost a certainty. We have a harlequin and bug damage, we can tell you that, folks. That's the damage. If you don't know how I can bug damage, you're lucky. But that's what it looks like, okay? That's that kind of silvering, you know? And that's a great way. If you're trying to find harlequin bugs, you find the damage, you'll probably find harlequin bugs, you know? Um, you don't need to see harlequin bug damage, I'm sure, Ben. No. <laughs> we have another test I was going to ask you, but it's um, a root aphid or something that looks like a powdery, it looks yeah. like a mycorrhizal colony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's on lots of different kinds of things, and you dig them up in the spring. Is it hurting the plants? Not noticed that. Yeah, so it's not a pest. It's part of the life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if the plants start to be hurt by it, then it's a problem. Otherwise, it's like, yeah, it is a root aphid. Uh -huh. And um, I've seen them too, but I've never seen any damage I can tell, so I don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah. And then the other thing, folks, which I forgot to mention, I thank Barbara Webster for this, who used to live over in the western part of Yancey County. Um, they've discovered that when plants get eaten on by bugs, their defense is to make more antioxidants. So when you take your stuff to market, or you put it on your table and your family says, I don't want to eat things that have been eaten on by bugs, just let them know there's more antioxidants in them. It's better for them. You know? Kids. Yeah. <laughs> kids. Good luck. Good luck. I still remember trying to make, I made pizza for Greg's kids one time years back, uh -huh. thinking they, that, that they had to like that, and uh -huh. the sauce wasn't sweet enough. No. You know? <laughs> Okay, let's see if we can hook. We're going to walk real fast. We're going to walk along the road. I'm staying inside. The thing I worry about for the squash is downy yeah. mildew. You know? But it's really the butternut, man, it's like it's pretty much bug impervious. You know? And the other squash we have back here is candy roaster, and it's, you know. Though actually, it looks like we have some. These might be one of the bush, bush butternuts. I think that's probably what it is. I think it's a bush type butternut. Hey there, Portia. Okay, so here's where I was hoping to find some pests. Alright, I need some broccoli side sheets. I'd like to find, you know, one of the things we're looking for here is little masses of yellow eggs that are wrapped in webbing. And that's the coated wasps that have just made a cabbage worm into uh, a nursery. Or it could be white eggs that are in webbing. But, you know, I'm not optimistic because we didn't spray this year and our broccoli didn't even have worms in it. So I don't know that we will find anything. And I can't really say how much that's weather and how much it's just been farmscaping for years. And actually the farmscaping is pretty lackadaisical here this year. But it still is. There still are flowers here and there. Once again, more harlequin bug damage, but not much. I mean, it's Basically, this place two years ago was covered up in harlequin bugs this time of year. I mean, totally covered up. And now, well, this year is not a great, as Ben and I have been discussing back and forth, not a great year to tell. It might be all weather. It might be none of our virtue whatsoever. Um, and I'll claim some virtue for ladybugs, mm -hmm. but I don't claim any virtue for harlequin bugs yet. Okay. I'm still, you know, <laughs> I'm still reeling from harlequin bugs. But to see if you can see anything on the bottoms of the leaves will be a much better chance of seeing anything. 
We'll see as we eat, as we cut into these, if we got any worms inside. So far we haven't. I don't think they ever sprayed this one. Yeah, no, they probably got taken off by wasps. Here we got some absolute worm damage that's current. So down in here is a chance to find somebody preying on that worm. Did I see frass? You know, there's something going on in here. But see, Ben, I can't even say for sure that it is the um, Draconid wasp. Uh -huh. It might also be birds. Uh -huh. you right, know? right. We I mean, get goldfinches that like to roam this and they're eating something. We had um, a patch of purple cauliflower at Island Lake Inn. Mm -hmm. That Jackie Greenfield, my um, co-worker, now working over at Gaia, was on my case big time because she was in charge of the edible ornamentals. Mm -hmm. And she was like, Pat, I see those butterflies. You gotta, you can't have worms in that. You gotta spray, you gotta spray. I'm like, I'm just gonna wait and watch. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna wait and watch. And I'm still not seeing worms. I see the butterflies, but I'm not seeing the worms. And then lo and behold, I did see the worms. I thought I'd have to spray. Mm -hmm. Came out the next morning, and it was like a convoy of house sparrows, mm -hmm. a so-called pest, right? Mm -hmm. Just taking them back to their young. Mm -hmm. They were hanging out in an old barn, and they took every last worm off there. Now the food safety people say, no, no, you can't have that, it might be bird poop, you know, it's like, but sorry, you know, <laughs> I'm going to trust nature, you know, I'm going to trust nature to do it. Yeah, I don't think we're going to, I really would think we'd find at least a few cases of the coned wasp parasitizing, parasitizing the um, worms, but I'm not seeing the worms even. And I can't, I can't assure you, they don't tell me every spray, but usually, Marshall does the spraying and he tends not to spray unless I ask him to just because he doesn't need to, you know, it's like it's, he doesn't need to do more work, you know, but he did, it's possible he did spray because he's going to, well, it depends. If we have any non-machada or mixed of squash here, then he probably has sprayed for vine borers. And if he sprayed for vine borers and he had BT in here, right. he, was, he needed to use it up, mm -hmm. he might come through and spray. Um, he might not. I don't know how much he's got that theory. I wouldn't spray because I'd want to keep feeding the wasp, you know? And we definitely had no problems as far as, the big problem to me, I don't really care what they do to the leaves, I don't want worms in the head, you know? No worms in the head, they can have all the leaves they want. You know? It doesn't bother me at all, you know? And I'll check with them. You know, I'll check, I'll actually ask them and I'll then ask Lisa to post the information on the web. So when you do have them spray, they spray only the head or the center? They, they aim for the center. Okay. I mean, they may hit the leaves too, but they're, right. their target's the center. Right, okay. They're not really worried about the leaves. Right. You know? um, we'll see. We've got to get back and look at the rest of the video because of the PowerPoint. Because you wouldn't leave, believe the level of predation that I got big heads on. You know? I mean, those plants were hammered. Um, and I just had to have faith that Richard was right. You know? Here's one. Here's a, a wasp. Yeah. Great. Good eyes, Ben. Good eyes. Excellent eyes. Yep, that's it. That's it, folks. Yes, sir. Is the worm still there or is the worm gone? It's pretty well gone. Yeah. Mm. There used to be a worm there. The picture I'll show you will show you the remains of the worm, too. Yeah. And by the way, folks, that's the one. Remember I said even I haven't held my fire? Because the cross-striped cabbage worm tends to have a little bit of webbing associated with it. And um, I walked out in the garden and saw webbing and yellow eggs. And there's yellow on the cross-striped cabbage worm. So I crushed those until one day I'm standing on the stage with Richard and he tells me what it is. And it's like, oops! Mm. <laughs> so... You know, I've learned that really that was a major one. I crushed hardly anything anymore after that one. Because I kind of feel like I have to confess that to every class. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Show you my very clay feet. Um, okay, well, I think that we did find that. That's a key find. I got um, a great shot of it. Great shot. This is a better thing. So. We'll probably leave it back here. Um, unless we wanted to have um, a mix up in the genetics. If we took it over to the other side of the garden, then they would cross and maybe they'd be more vigorous. Then again, maybe they wouldn't get along. I don't know. Um, I told you I'd point out the, um, the um, drugstore in the garden. Does anybody not know that when they get stung, they take plantain, either the broad leaf or the narrow leaf, chew it up and put it on the sting, and it totally takes the sting out? Keep putting it on until it doesn't hurt. You know, I've, had a, I've been stung by a white-faced hornet on my ankle, and 20 minutes later, 25 minutes later, small red spot, no pain, no itch, no nothing. So it's all about how diligently you replace it and how many times you put it on, but you can solve the problem every time. 
And I'm sure we'll see a nice big um, uh, broadleaf plantain too, so you know what both of them look like. Yeah, it's easy to spot, it's got that kind of nondescript flower. This is the, la the lance leaf. Uh, oh, this is a great example. This is accidental farmscaping. We basically just put a little bit of pak choy in, nobody got around to harvesting it. You can just see all kinds of life flying into it, you know? It's covered up with life, you know? And you can do that all the time. Pennsylvania soldier beetles, surfer fly. I keep looking, loads of Pennsylvania sur soldier beetles. Um, you can do that all the time. You let one or two plants go to seed. And that's your farmscaping. And you can look at them and go, that one's not going to make a good head anyways. You know? Let it go to seed. And then leave it in until it's done, and then take it out. Or let it go to seed and make some volunteers, depending on what your plans are. You know? But it's pretty easy that way to have some farmscaping in an area that you didn't... You're losing it to production for a little while, but not very long, because you've already grown the plant to the point where it's going to flower pretty easily. You know? So there's not much time before it flowers. Once it's done flowering, you can pull it out. Um, and that's what happened here. And we do that all the time. We leave things in just because we want them to flower. Everybody knows Queen Anne's lace, right? Wonderful beneficial insect. So tucked in that we're not seeing because they're not blooming yet. But if you look close, you'll see them. are all kinds of sunflowers. Coreopsis is just starting to bloom. Rebecca's. There are a lot more flowers that... And actually, we scheduled this class for July. It'd be way more in bloom. We'd have more pest. But we had a scheduling conflict with our, with our next class, and we had to switch it for that. So it's not the perfect time. You know, I'd rather be a little bit hotter. There'd be more pest. Though we'd have to even wait later for the bugs because they wouldn't even come out, you know, until 6 o'clock or something. But there's, you'll see more and more of the flowers coming on. This is the section I told you folks where they just gave the onions up to the flowers, you know. They looked at it and thought, you know, we're going to let the flowers go there, you know. And we're definitely losing onions because of that. But that's okay. We just make those calls. You know? Every, whoever's doing the weed in there decides. You know? it's just fate determines whether or not the flower or the onion grows there. Oh, another thing, folks. I talked about the cup plant. We're really moving towards those big things going up on the edges there. Like somebody like canna lilies, we put them in, now we're realizing we want them out of the farm. But the edges are fine, you know? All those edges, those are, I mean, they may not have quite the level of diversity as we had it in the garden, but it's close enough. It's going to work fine, you know? So it's just deciding how much you want to give up to um, beneficials and how much you